pro-choice. Pro-life. Pro-choice. Pro-life. Abortion. The issue that has divided our nation for decades. Currently in the United States, the presidential administration has planned an attack on abortion. Let's take a look back and see how we got here. The day is January 22nd, 1973. The Supreme Court has just ruled abortion constitutional under the 14th Amendment. This case, which was a turning point for abortion legislation in America, would come to be known as Roe versus Wade. This landmark decision ensured women the right to safe and legal abortions until the point of viability. The woman had a right to choose up until the point of fetal viability, and at that point, the government could impose more regulation. However, since then and throughout time, an increasing number of states have placed bans and restrictions upon abortion legislation, limiting accessibility for women. Well, I think if you look at the trajectory of this country, certainly this country is being less and less complacent uh, with the arguments that are saying that abortion is necessary. As someone who has had an abortion, who did need an abortion fund to get my abortion, um, and I was in Ohio, which is where I'm from, so I had a waiting period, I had, you know, to do like the ultrasound and like all these other things um, that they've put in place to make you, to either stop you or guilt you. Within the past year, nine states have passed bills to restrict access to abortions. We've seen dozens of new laws passed around the country to uh, make abortion far more difficult, far more of a bureaucratic uh, obstacle for people. We have seen in Alabama heartbreaking and unconstitutional assault on basic reproductive freedoms. Very scary knowing what can happen. We've seen like Ohio's like, ectopic pregnancy laws and just ignorance of science. So many states are putting very stringent regulations on women. The current presidential administration plans to completely overturn Roe versus Wade with a conservative majority in the Supreme Court. Well, I think ultimately uh, the target, of course, is Roe v. Wade. It is a legal question, and I think there are many cases that can go up to the Supreme Court and reverse ultimately what was done in 1973 and 72. I think the culture can be shifted towards a more increasing pro-life view, understanding that we need to preserve life in its earliest stages, including inside of the womb. Our vision for the 2020 presidential candidate is an agenda that addresses the importance of a women's right to a safe and legal abortion. Any people who are proposing health care legislation need to ensure and be willing to fight for abortion care being included explicitly by name in legislation. As we look into the future of abortion, it is imperative that we understand why access to abortion is so important. First, abortion is a form of reproductive health care. The 14th Amendment protects abortion rights because it guarantees the women the right to privacy regarding their health care matters. The Republicans at the same time have been dismantling and sabotaging and continuing their attacks on health care. This is a matter of health care and a matter of personal decision making for women in consultation with their physicians and their families and their loved ones. Women in the United States of America, by the way, have a right to control their own bodies. People need to understand and know that people are making the best decisions for their lives. Regardless of what you believe, you don't get to determine that for someone else. Next, it is necessary to consider that women will continue to have abortions even if they are unsafe, unsanitary, and illegal. According to Planned Parenthood, before Roe versus Wade, Illegal abortions caused one in six pregnancy-related deaths. We know it can be a, a lot safer than some other alternatives that people can take when they're just afraid and don't have access. First it was said uh, that abortions need to be safe, legal, and rare, and now we are in a culture where we are championing the practice of murdering innocent children. According to Gutmatcher Institute, 75% of today's abortions are performed on women in poverty. A key to ending poverty is empowering women and a key to empowering women is giving women uh, access to the full complement of health care, and that includes reproductive health care and reproductive rights. Abortion bans disproportionately affect women in poverty since they often lack the resources to travel to another state to have an abortion. Abortion has always been inaccessible for poor people. The government should not have the right to legislate women's bodies. Uh, I think that all of these efforts to criminalize uh, health care are a major danger to women's rights. It is really, really important for people to have their own autonomy, to control their livelihood, to be able to determine what they want to do with their lives and know what's best for themselves. 
President Donald Trump has been working to overturn Roe versus Wade by appointing pro-life Supreme Court justices. I will be appointing pro-life judges. If we have a judiciary that has pro-life judges and the president can place, play a role in appointing pro-life judges there, we'll be able to see a judiciary that ultimately brings an end uh, to this important decision of Roe v. Wade. He has also cut funding on Planned Parenthood, the biggest abortion provider in the United States. They are defunding Planned Parenthood. It's very easy to take abortion off the table. People need to be willing to fight for it. Looking forward, it is important that future presidents protect a woman's right to a safe and legal abortion. Future presidential candidates must understand and protect the precedent set by Roe versus Wade. As a nation, we have seen the effects of restricting sanitary abortions. It is imperative that we protect women and provide them with the choice to have an accessible, safe, and legal abortion. My body, my choice.